Hey everyone, welcome to episode 9 of season 1 for Project Life Goal. We're going to go over the work that I did to complete the front spar assembly for the horizontal stabilizer. I'll go ahead and apologize in advance. I know I've been a little behind on the videos for you guys. A few uh, personal life projects came in that uh, required some of my time, but I was still working on the plane, just hadn't gotten around to the video editing yet. So let's go ahead and take a look at the work. So we're starting off with the front spar assembly. Here I am working on the 702 spars. The spars are actually designed for an RV8 and then modified for the RV7. So you have to do some manual fabrication work yourself, which involves some trimming and cutting and drilling some relief holes and then bending out uh, the remaining flange. The instructions that accompany the kit weren't very clear to me, so I ended up using the specific callout that they have for the front spar tab detail on the actual drawings. That's on drawing number three. They lay out a very high level three step process, which I uh, adhered to. Here I made a wood block to bend the seven degree angle onto the 702 spars and begin assembly of the spars, the spar doublers, the reinforcement angle, and the splice angle. Uh, there's certainly a lot that's going on just in this small area and you have to be very careful. Make sure you understand the documentation and the drawings so that you don't make a mistake. I spent a lot of time reviewing and re-reviewing the instructions and the drawings just to make sure that I wouldn't make another silly mistake like I did on the vertical stabilizer. I would say that having a vise definitely would have helped make a lot of these bends that you have to do during the process a, a lot easier. Um, between the MDF chunks that I have and a couple of custom pieces that I made, I was able to uh, make do with what I had available to me at the time. But it definitely wasn't uh, perfect. Uh, you can note that there was an opportunity for improvement. If I had a vice, that probably would have been the, the best tool to gain that improvement from. Here I'm marking up the reinforcing angles in preparation for finishing the end details on them. You put a radius on the end and put a s slight angle into its length. That's called out in the tapered detail on drawing number three. Uh, what you'll notice is a lot of this footage is actually just from the security camera. Not all of it did I get close-up details on. I was uh, honestly struggling a, a bit with the instructions for the horizontal spar assembly, so I spent more time focusing on the work and a little less time focusing on the uh, close-in shots. But I did try to get you guys some here and there where I could. I would previously talked about removing the guards off of the bench grinder to get more access to the scotch bright wheels that I have on both sides. I've since decided I'm going to leave them on. I just feel more comfortable having that rest to actually use to my advantage uh, to help guide the material on. It's more just a personal preference thing for, for me. Uh, again, be nice to have a vise. Here I am bending the seven degree angles into the reinforcement angles to get them to match with the angle of the spar and then the uh, spar doublers. Uh, certainly wasn't a, a pretty setup, but it worked. It got the job done. I really do like that mallet that I have. It's a mallet that's advertised as not bouncing back when you use it, and I found that to be the case as well. So the center four holes, uh, the very end holes on the 702 spars, you have to actually do some dimple and countersink operations on since they'll be receiving some flush head rivets. I went ahead and I just did a quick test now that I've got the uh, pneumatic squeezer working much better with the new airline. I did one set of the dimples using a hand squeezer and one set using the pneumatic squeezer. I didn't notice any difference, so I think we're, we're good there now. Here I am doing the machine countersinking operations on those reinforcement angles.
And now we're doing the final fitment of the front spar assembly with the doublers and the reinforcement angles. And moving on to trimming of the nose rib, uh, HS5, I omitted the zeros. You have to trim the aft side of these root ribs to fit between the reinforcing angles that are on the front of the front spar assembly. Uh, I've been marking my parts earlier in the process than is actually called out by Vans uh, to keep all the orientations straight and correct. Uh, I've found that this greatly helps me visualize the, the build as it's going along. Hopefully will prevent me from making any mistakes too. And then as I said in a previous video, I did all of my deburring of those flanges, at least uh, the very outside before doing any seaming or fluting. Uh, it should hopefully save me a little bit of time later on when I come back and do my final deburring and touch up all of the, the intricate details that I wasn't able to get with the bench grinder or the smaller scotch Bright wheel on the drill press. So here I'm cruising through all of the ribs for the entire horizontal stabilizer in preparation for the fluting and seaming operations. So I want to go ahead and take this opportunity to thank a few people that have been extremely helpful during my build process. First off is Lee Baker. He's an A and PIA that I was fortunate to meet during a sport air workshop up in Oshkosh. He's letting me bounce questions off of him now and again when I run into troubles. Uh, it's been a great resource to have available and then also of course the EAA chapter that I joined 414 uh, the members there have been great to talk to about it as well if you're considering building your own plane I highly recommend I can't stress this enough take a sport air workshop you know if nothing more it gets you involved in the community you meet a few great people along the way and then also I want to thank uh, Larry Larson who actually posted a link to this jig that I made up for seaming of the rib flanges. Much faster than doing it by hand. Thanks again, Larry. Really appreciate you sending that over. So where we're at right now as we finish up the front assembly on the horizontal stabilizer, we're at 21 hours of build time for a total of 29 hours project time which includes inventory and cleaning tasks and then 46 hours total time with the video editing. The front spar assembly was definitely the most challenging operation to date uh, but I did get through it and I've certainly learned a lot along the way and I did enjoy the process as well. So with that I'll see you guys on the next one. If you uh, enjoyed this video, go ahead and give me a like. If you'd like to continue following, hit that subscribe button and click the bell so that you get alerts. Thanks for watching. Take care.